Wait. Shh, 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 shh. Stay there. Do it. You know what you're doing. Megan, come on. Hello. <laughs> first things first. This is to me the most exciting video I've ever done. If it works, I. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna work yet, but we can hope, we can hope. For those of you that don't know, I don't think any of you will really know this, but I am a massive fan. I adore Norwich City Football Club. I love them. I love them so much. And uh, yeah, I never really was into football when I was younger, but then I started dating Tom like three years ago. And for the first year that we were together, I was never really into it. But after that, I became addicted and I just love the squad I love the club as a whole and I love they play good football they play Megan approved football I thought it would be cool since they've just returned to the Premier League I want to find like kind of a unique way to support them I guess and I thought what's better than reading their favorite books <laughs> the plan is I'm gonna message the whole squad and I'm gonna ask them what their favorite books are and we're gonna hope that we get some responses. I don't know, this video may be very short. <laughs> well, I just wanna upload it if we get no responses. So I guess you know already if I got at least one or something. Yeah, I, I really hope I get some responses because I, A, I wanna know what their favorite books are. Ew! And uh, I just think it'd be a really cool thing to do and see like, I guess it gives you more of an insight into these players, right? And also it's just a fun, fun way to pick a TBR. So um, who knows, maybe one of them will say, the Raven Boys, and I'll finally read it. <laughs> Daisy Jones and the Six, <laughs> Jim Crow's favorite book. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm gonna go message them all now, and then I'll update you whenever any of them respond, if that happens. Listen, they're all verified accounts. They're all guys who probably get loads of messages, and the chances of me getting any responses are very slim, but we can pray and we can hope. I'm gonna message a few of their wives and stuff if I follow them as well, in the hope that we'll get a response from them. Fingers crossed, everyone. And I'll check back in if I get any responses. Oh my God, I really hope I do because I'm so excited. I'm No, I don't think anyone understands how excited I am for this video. I was saying on Twitter, like, no one is gonna understand what a big deal this is for me. If one of them, if one of them responds, I think I'll like, that's bigger than anything. That's bigger than anything. They're like my, I'm gonna say my Madonna, but who isn't my Madonna anymore? Okay, I'm getting delirious. I'm gonna go, bye. I just can't stop laughing. <laughs> okay, so we've gotta look rough. <laughs> Excuse my appearance, but uh, we've got our first response. <laughs> it's just the cover that makes me laugh so much. <laughs> But there's other covers which is normal. <laughs> that one just... but... Oh my god, you can see all our dirty washing in the background. Let me try and move my head. Um, <laughs> so Mario has responded, who is my favourite player. <laughs> Look how red I've gone. <laughs> Mario has responded, who is, what should I say, the most handsome <laughs> I'd say he's the most handsome player in the Premier League, let alone in yeah. New York City. Yeah. He, yeah. he needs his blonde hair back. Oh yeah, I'll put a picture in. I'll put a picture of him now and with his blonde hair. And yeah. I think we can all agree he should get the blonde hair back. So he's just responded to me saying that his favourite book is The Power of the Subconscious by Joseph Murphy. And I looked it up and it, it's called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Hang on, let me show them the cover that I saw that made me laugh. It might be That's the cover. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't expect to be reading any self-help in in this video. I don't know if I should have done, but like, I don't know. I just didn't expect them that to be any of the answers. Well, you just like expect players to be like confident, don't you? Like, mm. take someone like Mario, like. I yeah, mean, I just. And wanna... This makes sense to your viewers, like as far as. And also, like, interested in I guess more like spiritual. I guess it's kind of like a spiritual book, right? The power of your subconscious mind. That's going to be about like uh, ego and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's, it's spiritual. That's more the way I see it. Is psychology. That seems more like. Yeah. You know, so that's going to be the first book that I read for this. It's not that long either. Thank God. I thought all these books were going to be like six hundred pages for some reason. Let me read. Let's should we read what it's the the description on Goodreads. The Power of Your Subconscious Mind has been a bestseller since its first publication in 1963. It's one of the most brilliant and beloved spiritual self-help okay. works of all time, 
which can help you heal yourself, banish your fears, sleep better, enjoy better relationships and just feel happier. The techniques are simple and results come quickly. You can improve your relationships, your finances and your physical well-being. Take free kicks like Mario, then <laughs> that's what I'm buying. <laughs> Maybe that is a free kick taking section in the book. <laughs> so yeah, actually I don't mind I'm actually I don't mind reading it because I used to read a lot of self help books. Like it used to be primarily what I read, so it just wasn't what I was expecting, but that's gonna be the first book. Then a couple of days passed without an answer. And I was beginning to give up hope. I thought the video wouldn't go ahead. <laughs> but then we got a response. Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. So we didn't have a response for ages. Like I said, I was losing hope. I was, I was so sad. I thought, ah, the video is gone. But then, just now, we got a message from Max Ahrens. Max Aaron. He's not actually he's right back. He's 19? 19? 19? No, he's like 20 now. He tw no, I think he's... 21. No, he's definitely not still 19. I think he is 19. Oh, I was about to send Ben Godfrey a gif. <laughs> 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 like the little fat things wriggling their butt to Ben Godfrey. I think he's still 19, because he's younger than you. That's true. He's still 19. 4th of January 2000. So yeah, he's 19. And he's our, um, he's our right back and he's amazing. He's amazing, isn't he, Tom? He's just like... I'd say he's probably the most valuable player in the team, like, monetary-wise. For those people who don't, like, follow football, it's like... He's like our kind of young prodigy. Yeah. The team's full of them, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, he just responded. And I said when I messaged them, I said, what is your favourite book from either now or childhood? Because they're, they're busy boys, you know? There's footballers. <laughs> yeah, they're busy training. Doesn't mean they're going to be... Probably won't be reading. So, he said, Hi, my favourite book growing up was Kenzuki's Kingdom by Michael Mopogo. All the best. So, um, yeah, I read that when I was younger. And I really uh, I really enjoyed it, actually. I think it was one of my favourite Michael Mopogo. I had the whole Michael Mopogo box set of, like, 20 books. So, um, yeah, it's going to be like rereading one of my childhood favourites for me, I guess. But we also have, we love, as proof, as proof for how much... <laughs> as proof of how much we love Max Aaron's <laughs> we have his trousers <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned do you want the number so they know it's specifically him where's his number there, there it is that's not his number now anymore is it has no. he changed it yeah he's changed it what is he now I think he's number two 37 Max Aaron so this is like their training <laughs> <laughs> trousers and for explanation everyone probably thinks we're really weird so basically they sell it at the end of the season some of the players um clothes off on ebay for like five or ten pound and it goes the money goes to the academy like which is for the younger players essentially is that how you would explain it the academy yeah 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 for like for the development center yeah and stuff like of that. like the young talent that we have so um tom has loads of their <laughs> <laughs> their clothes that they wore so this is max aaron no, but like for anyone that's watching it's like having having these players message you like for us and there's a team you support it might mm. be like i don't know like uh, like kobe bryant or uh, <laughs> i don't know like peyton manning or i don't know who those people are they're, they're like american sports stars but like mm. obviously just like more less known versions because because norwich are only a small club in england but they're our heroes, so it's kind of it's kind of really significant for them to message us and stuff like that. So it really, is. It's really nice of them, and it's it's interesting to see their looks as well. Because yeah, like you don't think, oh Max, but I suppose Max is the same age as us, so it makes yeah. sense that when he was younger, he loved a book that I loved. Well, not really, because he's so good at football. I just wouldn't imagine him even reading. Ever reading? I think I every kid. Oh. No. <laughs> I'm nowhere near as good at football as Max. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so that'll be our second book, and. Either I'll update with a third book or no one else responds, so <laughs> we shall see. Anyway, bye. Hello. I just thought I'd check in and update you. I'm actually going to start the video. <laughs> and I'm going to start with Max's book. I think I'm going to actually end up reading both Max and Mario's books as audiobooks because they're on script. So you're not going to have any clips of me sitting there reading, but like, do we care? No, we're just here 
to find out. I mean, I don't really do that that much. Tell me if it bothers you, like the clips of me reading and I try to put my life in, but like what you need to understand is that when I'm at uni, my life is boring. When we get into the vlogs where I'm back home, then maybe I might actually be doing stuff. <laughs> but at uni, I'm just trying to survive. <laughs> so um, there's not much to show you. So yes, Kenzuki's Kingdom is on script and it's three hours and 20 minutes long. So really not long. And I listen on 1.5 speed at the moment. Um, and so... I think I can finish this within the next day or two. So I'm going to start this now. I'll update you part way through it on what I'm thinking. And yeah, I'm hoping I'm going to like it. Obviously, it's a reread of a childhood favorite for me. Again, if you haven't seen my reading my childhood favorites video, which everyone likes to bring up about me crying and <laughs> uh, then I will make sure to link that in the description. But this is basically like that. This is one of my favorite but I love Michael Morpogo. I read all his books. Private Peace. Like, I should have read some of his books in that video. And the thing is, I can't do it in the next one because I'm reading all the bad Twilight-inspired kind of fantasy in the next uh, childhood favourites. So, um, but I love Private Peaceful. But my favourite was the story of Adolphus Tips. I'm not sure if that's the full title. But I I think that's probably the book I've reread the most. I think I read that book about eight times. And so I wonder if that's on script. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh my God, hang on. Max, you have just, you just opened, Private Peace was on there. Come on. The Amazing Story of Adolphus Tips. And it's 2 hours 57. Well, I may be listening to that. So yeah, I'm gonna start Kenzuki's Kingdom and I'll update you what I'm thinking about it in a little bit. So hi, the observant among you will notice we've changed locations. I'm now home. I have uploaded a few videos like here already. Hang on, I'm gonna tilt this down a bit. <laughs> yeah, I've uploaded a few videos here already, but um, in terms of vlog, like I was filming before I left. The book, I'm enjoying it. I don't know why I haven't finished it. I think I've been putting off filming this for a while because I wanted to check in like halfway and then like, I just haven't, I haven't filmed this, so. Do you know who finds you absolutely fascinating? <laughs> Go on. You. <laughs> like I said, it's only about two and a half hours. And the first hour is almost entirely, like, him before he gets on the island. So I just realised I did a pretty bad job of explaining the book in this initial clip. Also, I'm using my camera mic because my mic's dead, so that's it. Um, so essentially in the book we follow a boy, I can't remember his name, as he and his family uh, decide to live at sea for a year, so they have a boat and they are just sailing around everywhere. <laughs> but eventually the boat kind of, uh, there's a storm and he falls off the boat and that's how he ends up uh, deserted on an island with this mysterious man. So when I'm saying, oh, the first hour is stuff not on the island, that's the stuff with his family, getting the boat, traveling around the world, all of that stuff. And then the rest of the book, he is deserted on this island with this mysterious man called Kensuke. And that's basically it. <laughs> also, I've been pronouncing it wrong. It's not Kenzuke, it's Kensuke? Kensuke's Kingdom? Something like that. The first kind of, a good majority of the book isn't even on the, the island. And when you've kind of gotten to the island bit, there's sections where he's like, over the next couple months or over the next few weeks. And you're like, I would rather have more of the story on the island than all the stuff on the boat with his family beforehand. Like, I just didn't care. Um, the opening and like, <laughs> hang on, let me bookmark where I am. And then I'll go back and I'll, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Because I knew I was in for a ride when I heard the opening. So this music plays the opening and uh, like in between all the different chapters. Let's see if it's here. It bangs, right? Right! See, I was pronouncing it wrong. Right! That's my favourite bit when it goes... That's my favourite bit. So anyway, you hear snippets of that in between all the chapters and I, I just love it. I'm, I'm walking along like in the middle of the street or something going... You know? So um, that I've enjoyed that. The narrator is like some old British guy, right? 
And I think Michael Pogo's language is maybe a bit old fashioned because this dude has been writing books for donkeys. I don't know how long he, if since I was like probably over 20, 30 years, something like that. I don't know how long it's been since his first book came out. And um, the guy is old who's reading it. And just hearing him, <laughs> the way he pronounces certain phrases and words is like in a way that a kid, because this is a, like a 10 year old boy or something, in a way that a kid would never. And it just throws you out the story because I just start laughing at the way he said a phrase. Just, I don't know how to explain it. Just, you know, the way that old British men sometimes say phrase. I can't, and I can't be bothered to search this whole two hours to find you uh, an example. It just takes me out of it and I go, whoop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, maybe it's been fun reading Michael Mopogre again. He's definitely like a trip, like... Makes me feel like I'm a kid again. I tried to go see if, cause I had a whole box set and this was one of them, but I thought they were all in my brother's room, but he only has like three of them left. I think he's lost all the other ones or something. I don't know. So I couldn't hold it up. It's definitely engaging, but yeah. I mean, it's a good book, but I'm sitting here going, I wish it went into more depth. <laughs> but I don't know if I can expect that of it cause it's a kid's book. Do you know what I mean? So it's fine. It is fine. I'm not like obsessed, but like I'm thankful for the throwback, you know? Come say hello. Hey, big sniffs. Yeah, they smell nice. They smell nice. So I just finished Kensuke's Kingdom this morning. I really enjoyed it. I gave it three stars, which I think is pretty good. For me, three stars is I liked it. It progressed into a storyline where it turned out that the guy, Kensuke, who um, the boy was staying, I should put him down, uh, the boy was staying on the island with, he was Japanese and he had served as a soldier in World War II. And uh, so he had been serving abroad when the bomb hit Nagasaki and that's where he, all his family were. And so when he heard about the bomb, he just assumed that all his family were dead and he heard on the radio, oh, everyone's died. And so he came and he shipwrecked on this island, which they're now on, and soldiers arrived at one point and they were joking about how they'd killed everyone in Nagasaki and all this stuff. So he just assumed that his wife and his child were dead and he just thought it would be less painful to stay on the island rather than go back uh, to Japan and see what the situation was. And I think, uh, you know, thinking about it, this is something that Michael Mopoga, I think, did very well in a lot of his children's books. A lot of them tackled really serious topics or uh, world events that kids should know about but may not know about in their everyday lives. And he found a way to educate kids on these things and to really show the human side of uh, atrocities and stuff like that you know and it was it was in such an accessible way and it's such a great way to teach him about these things so I think that's something he did well in a lot of these books especially in this one I thought that it broached the subject in a really um, helpful to understand way for these for kids you know but I'm not gonna lie it was kind of boring <laughs> I don't want to be a bitch but you guys are really boring oh, oh. I know it's a kid's book, you know, it, it's a kid's book. And so part of me thinks, oh, I shouldn't expect too much. But then other parts of me thinks, well, I've been reading a lot of kids' books again, you know, from my reading my favourite childhood books video, which I'll link up above. Um, you know, I read Love Aubrey and that hit me so hard. So I also think, well, kids' books should hit you hard. They should impact you and they shouldn't be boring for a lot of it. You know, it was kind of one note, the same thing happened throughout the entire book. There wasn't peaks and troughs of emotion. It was it was fine and it was fun to read it again. I definitely want to read the story of Adolphus Tips and audiobook again, which, you know, was my favourite, favourite Michael Mopoga book. So hopefully I'll do that soon, maybe in 2020. But uh, yeah, I'm going to start Mario's book now, which is The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. And yo, this is some whack music too. Hang on, give me a second. I've got to get it up. <laughs> Listening to the power of your subconscious mind by Joseph Murphy. Copyright BN Publishing. Right. At BN Pub it sounds like uh, the beginning of an American like morning breakfast news show. Do you know what I mean? Like that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> to me, that's what it made me think of. Made me think of like I don't know any American breakfast shows. The Today Show. 
Is that one? Anyway, we don't care. So I'm going to start that. Well, I have started it. I've started like the first chapter. So I will update you when I've got some concrete thoughts on it. Hello. <laughs> so I've just been filming another video, which is pretty why it looks a bit like crazy. I feel almost like I can't say negative things about this book. <laughs> Partly because I don't want to be like, Mario, I hate your book. Because I love him. <laughs> you know, I don't want to, I don't know, it just feels weird, like, saying I don't like it. And secondly, it's a very spiritual, personal book, right? So if it's someone's favourite book, then chances are, like, it's had an impact on their life. And if a book has had an impact on your life in that way, particularly one that's teaching you how to better your life then I don't want to be the person sitting here saying it's a sh it's not a good book but it just isn't working for me I it do it deals heavily with kind of your subconscious mind acting as a law of attraction so a lot of people constantly talk about how you have to think positive thoughts that you want to attract you want to think about what you attract you want to act as if you already have achieved what you attract in order for it to happen you know all these kinds of ideas you know thinking I already have uh, I can't think of an example, my dream job, um, and then not helping you achieve that, right? And I believe that if we speak things out into the universe, um, then it will, like, happen in a, in a certain way. If we are positive and we are determined, um, and we speak things out into the universe, I think that's something that's really important to do, speaking out your hopes and your dreams into the world, then that will help us achieve that, right? And that's a big part of this book is saying initially and I agree with that but the thing is he is dealing super heavily on medical examples so examples of like um, a man a man's daughter had really bad really bad skin condition or something like that throughout her life and he always thought I would give my right arm he always said I would give my right arm to see her healthy and then they were in a car crash where the man lost his right arm and suddenly she was healthy it's examples like that or a guy someone has cancer and then they tell themselves that the cancer is going to heal they're not going to have cancer they don't have any treatment and suddenly they don't have cancer stuff like that I don't ag agree with <laughs> and I think it can be a bit uh I don't know I, I think I think I think our minds are powerful things and definitely determine how we're feeling in some ways. Like, um, I've never really spoken about this ever. Um, I was gonna save, save it for like a big video, but just to mention it briefly, uh, in 2019 for a little while, for a good half, first half of the year, I experienced health anxiety. So I was constantly convinced there was something wrong with me, constantly convinced I was dying and didn't know, um, and stuff like that. And by my mind believing that I had stuff wrong with me, I would get symptoms, I'd get pain, I'd get lumps, I'd get whatever, you know, and there wasn't anything wrong with me. As soon as I stopped believing that, all the pain went away. And so our minds are definitely powerful things in terms of be making us believe that maybe we're ill or whatever. But I I just think sometimes this book veers into making some dangerous claims about health. <laughs> That's what I would say. I mean, I liked the section it had on money. I thought the way it spoke about money and how the attitude we should have to money was very interesting. Not necessarily completely agreeing with it, you know what I mean? But um, I found it very interesting to listen to. But for a lot of this book, I felt like it was saying the same thing. And it was always that medical cut came back to medical examples. And that just doesn't work for me as a person. That's not something that I'm necessarily interested in reading about. And so part of me wanted to DNF it. But <laughs> I'm listening to it on fast speed now. I just feel like I don't want to say I don't like it because I love Mario. <laughs> but it may be my least favourite book that I've read in a long time. Just because I really don't agree with it. A lot of what the guy thinks and I think it can be a bit dangerous but I agree with some of the stuff this guy thinks and I think that if a book like this gives you hope and gives you drive and gives you uh, inspiration then great you know I think with these kind of spiritual self-help books there's gonna be ones that really vibe with you and ones that really don't vibe with you I think they're some of the most polarizing types of books that are out there um, there's definitely been some that have really appealed to me and worked for me. I'm sorry, I'm showing you my bra strap this whole time. Um, yeah, some that really work for me and then some that really don't. So I think it's, it's just like one of the most personal types of books that there is and this ain't it, chief, for me. <laughs> and I feel really sad to be ending this video on a sad note because it's going to be a sad note. It's going to be like one star. I'm trying to be positive about it to you guys, but...
Okay, that's all I really have to say. I ain't loving it, but I'll check back in with you for a final time. Um, and yeah. Oh, Mario. <laughs> Why have you done this to me? <laughs> it's sad. It's sad, you know? It's, it's a shame. So, I finished it. And I'm giving it one star. I understand why people like this book. I think spiritual books, like I said before, are a very personal thing. So there's been some more spiritual books that I have enjoyed. And this one just didn't appeal to me. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think they are very hit or miss. And things are going to either really, really engage with you and you're gonna go yep yep that's what I'm looking for or you're gonna really disagree with what they're saying and I also think it's important like a book like this someone can read it and feel like it's exactly what they need at that point in their life and so that can be a really big reason why someone would enjoy it as well however I thought it was chatting <laughs> rubbish <laughs> The thing is, I can't even really tell you what this book said anymore. I finished it yesterday, and I just felt like we were saying the same stuff every chapter. I don't feel like there was a lot of difference in what we were talking about. I literally felt like it was one thing we are talking about, and that is how your subconscious mind can heal cancer, or heal arthritis, or heal, you know, heal all these different things, which, um, you know, every chapter there was someone healing a medical condition just through convincing their mind that it could be healed and I just sometimes think that that approach and telling people that can be a bit dangerous I was really nervous to come and talk about this because like I don't want to offend anyone um but I also want to be honest with my experience of it right I don't want to come on here and be like oh it was okay I just didn't really appeal to me because then I'm lying to you right um I need to come on here and tell the truth so this is me coming on here and telling the truth <laughs> I think it's a very typical book it's the kind of book you hear people with their five step plans talking about and really really like successful entrepreneur people who say I've got the secret it's very much that uh, but this was kind of the first book of its kind. It's quite old. And so I think maybe this book perhaps laid some of the groundwork for some ideas that um, I like in other books. So an example of a book which I quite enjoyed, which can be seen as more spiritual, is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Now I read this like five or six years ago, so it's been quite a while. But I'm pretty sure there's some sections in here that I... Um, highlighted or like wrote down it's quite similar in the idea of you know if you're being positive about something and speaking stuff out into the universe then things will come to you however it didn't have that kind of like i just didn't agree with the this this okay this book <laughs> the book focused majority on your subconscious mind being able to achieve medical transformations and getting you material objects for me that's what i took from it and they're two things which i don't think just thinking about something or you know thinking about it overnight can help um i think you doing those kind of positive affirmations can improve your mood can improve your outlook can improve your um your personal achievements as you become more motivated but I don't see I don't believe in the whole it affects outward uh, it's difficult to explain because I can I do believe that if you live like that then you attract positivity I think positivity attracts positivity but in those two instances I just think there are many other variable variables at play I'm very sorry Mario <laughs> I feel bad because he shared with me what his favourite book is and I just didn't like it but like I said it's a very personal thing and something like this can occur can come to someone at a very important part of your life like I I it surprised me I was talking to Tom a lot about it and you know Mario I think it's important that as not many people will know not a lot about Norwich City he's definitely the best player under pressure he scored some really important goals um he scored the goal that kind of got us promoted into the premier league last season and the goal that meant we were we won the league last season that we were in and he's you know really great under pressure and he's very confident and so it, you kind of it surprises you in a way even though maybe it shouldn't it surprises you that something like this is 
uh, his favourite book. So I just want to say thank you very much for watching this if you have made it till the end. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I would love to do more uh, reading books from my favourite football players. I really enjoyed the experience of reading uh, an old childhood favourite in Michael Morpogo from Max and I think it was really nice because it made you realise how <laughs> how much he's done with his life and how little I've done with my life in the same amount of time. No, I'm joking. But, you know, he's a really highly successful football player. The Cubs want to buy him for 40 million right now. He's playing great football and he's like the same age as me. He's like a couple weeks older than me. So, well done, Max. No, but it's, it, it's cool to think that someone like that, you know, you come from the same place, you come from reading the same books when you're a kid. So, um... Yeah, I enjoyed that, even though the book was three stars for me, it was a really nice experience to read that again. And I think, although I gave it one star, because of the context I read this book in, it was one of the most interesting reading experiences I've had in a long time, because it really made me think about why would this be his favourite book, and what would he see in it. I'd love to talk to him about it, but I don't. I doubt Mara would be watching. I was sitting here, I was sitting here all anxious, like, oh my god, I don't want to offend him, when, like, he ain't going to be spending his spare time watching me talk about books. But, uh, Mara, if you're out there, let a girl know why you like it so much. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it, and I'll see you very, very soon with another video. Bye. Bye.